Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for tuning in to the 8 p.m. Balingua newscast here on Spectrum Television. Making news tonight, the Faker Food Executive Committee has unanimously given a 72 hours deadline to the president of Faker Food to take a decision concerning the future of head coach Antonio Concesao after his failure to secure Cameroon's seat trophy at home. In this newscast, we look at the resolutions reached at in the General Assembly meeting and the recognition of Samuel Tufis as a peace bearer by Southwest Chiefs. In economy, we will talk to some economists on the reasons behind the price augmentation and a possible solution out of this crisis. This and many more will be yours in this newscast. Thank you once again for trusting us and tuning into the 8 p.m. Balingua newscast, which will open in the French language with you, Leila Renganzu. Good evening, Leila. Bonsoir à vous, la donnette en dessin. Mesdames, bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir et merci d'être avec nous. Il est 20h sur les antennes de Spectrum Télévision, c'est le journal. Lutte contre la vie chère, le prix du pain a-t-il réellement augmenté Dans la capitale politique du Cameroun, les populations interrogées ce 17 février 2022 par notre reporter Olivier Bouzique nous font savoir que le prix de cet aliment dépend désormais de la zone dans laquelle on se trouve. En effet, alors que certaines boulangeries semblent encore maintenir le prix de la baguette à 125 francs CFA, d'autres par contre sont déjà passées à 150 francs CFA. Reportage. Dans notre zone ici au quartier d'abord, ce n'est pas augmenté d'abord. Je ne sais pas si demain ou après demain ou pas, un autre jour ça va s'augmenter. Pour, mais pour l'instant là d'abord, ce n'est pas augmenté. Moi j'ai eu acheté le pain plus cher dans mon quartier par exemple. J'ai acheté le pain à 175 euros, 150 bon, bon, moi je suis dépassé par, par ces événements là. Je n'arrive pas à comprendre comment le pain augmente à ce niveau là. On entend parler de l'augmentation du prix du pain dans, dans, par les médias, dans les quartiers et tout. En ce qui concerne notre secteur, nous n'avons pas encore vu cette augmentation. On achète encore le pain à 150 francs au niveau du cas de notre zone. Mais je ne sais pas pourquoi, si c'est déjà c'est une spéculation ou alors les gens ambitionnent augmenter le prix du pain et ils sont en train de passer l'information de cette manière, on ne comprend rien. Ou alors c'est une pénurie que les gens veulent provoquer pour enfin augmenter le prix du pain. C'est augmenté avant le pain, c'était 100 francs. Ils nous donnent avant 100 francs, mais maintenant c'est 125 qui viennent nous livrer. Ça fait 4 jours maintenant. Nous, on vend à 150. Donc c'est comme ça qu'on fait. Le client se plaint. L'État doit veiller à ce qu'on n'augmente pas le prix du pain parce que... Ils sont sans ignorer que c'est la nourriture des pauvres, c'est les produits de grande consommation. L'augmentation du prix du pain peut provoquer euh, tout ce qu'on connaît, puisque les gens vont mourir de faim. Et quand ils auront faim, ils vont descendre dans la rue. Donc moi, je vois un danger en augmentant le prix du pain. This time around, we still talk on economy, where economists believe that the irregular economic atmosphere fallout to be the reason for the steady light hike in the prices of basic commodities experienced in the market. Our reporter, Crystal Asexuele, caught up with one and put together the following report. Prices of basic commodities continue to experience a steady increase in the markets. Some economists go with the opinion that this is due to the irregular economic atmosphere fallout. Since the economic crisis of 1987, Cameroonians have never got a purchasing power that can make them to live above the poverty level. It's always a, it's, there's an oligarchy, a group of people that are turning the riches of Cameroon. So apparently Cameroon is rich, but there's a problem of redistribution of the wealth of Cameroon to the ordinary people. This inflation in prices has also intensified by the current political unrest ongoing in the two English regions of Cameroon that has negatively affected market mechanisms of demand and supply, a factor cost making it very difficult for businesses to thrive. Don't forget that people are paying rent there, which is a factor cost in the northwest and southwest, and they are not operating. So they will redeploy cross-pricing and get it uh, the prices, it's so that they can work at the benefit. 
Moreover, the tax base increase by government to restrain fiscal tensions also has a direct adverse impact on households and commercials. This government does not understand that when you tax, when you increase taxes of transporters, when you increase taxes or price of petroleum, you are in, by induction going to face this situation. With this situation at hand, economists are proposing solutions to avoid hyperinflation in the country. The factor cost of the people who have the goods in the market is high. The only thing is that what? They should stop them so that they reduce the prices. But now you are saying that they need money for the war. Should they stop the war? Well, how many times have we asked that they should stop that war? It's costing up. They should stop the war, get the money out of the war, solve them this and get uh, social peace in Cameroon. The inflation rate measures a broad rise or fall in prices that consumers pay for a standard basket of goods from a 2.29% increase in August to a 2.37% in September 2021. This time around we talk education where students of the University of Boya how, who have the desire to study or further their studies out of the country have been drilled on the requirements to be met and the educational system out of Cameroon. The educators talked on the need of a language proficiency test and better preparation for such an adventure as failing to better prepare is tantamount to preparing to fail. Let's listen to some of these students and their experiences. Okay, at Kenya, you put it to like to um, show to my sister, like he said, that help us in the German language because I want to follow my study in German. So I saw the requirement that was so complicated the document that you need to a proof that you have a German language or English language. So I was so confused and I, I gave up. But when I came here, the way he said everything, knew that it would help us to, 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 uh, to fix our document, to, uh, like, to plan us, and to show to my sister. So I was very happy to be presenting some of my friends because they are very interested to study. Like um, based on this COVID-19 scenario, they had chances before that many of them were bounced back because they never had that team and some were actually um, um, kind of uh, restrictive of taking the vaccine. Yes, and that's one of my main problems too. Because even like my junior wants to want to go for this program, but what about the vaccine issue? That's a question to ponder. We remain in the southwest region where the Central Network of Human Rights Defenders, REDAC, has taken the peace fight to the people of the southwest region. A workshop has been organized in order to further em emphasize on the need of peace and reconciliation in the crisis streaking southwest and northwest regions. Katrine Corner tells us more in this report. To increase the chances of resolving the conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, the Central Network of Human Rights Defendants, REDAC, headed by Maximilian Gombe, has trained some community leaders in an inter-community dialogue in Boya in order to sharpen their skills on peaceful mechanism. The effort to know this is uh, the, um, the hope, because we, we will hope that maybe in the end of this year, we can reconcile all of us. Our objective is really to make sure that all Cameroonians solve the problem and we sit together and have the good justice and reconciliation commission. Redak has said that the most suitable way to build peace is to recognize and invest in the community leaders who are equal partners in peace processes. Stop to the community. Taking it to the grassroots because once there is war, once there is conflict, no matter the type of conflict, people must talk. And you must listen to their experiences, tap from their best practices, and forge a way ahead to make sure that peace returns. And there is no peace talk without the people who are affected. So that is why they call it intercommunity, because you go right down to the communities that are affected the most, and that is where you get the real feeling of the people, their experiences. You even talk with them and know what they did to even go out of the situation. That is when you start talking peace. You must go to the grassroots. Maximilian Ngombe urged locals to have as their watchword peace. Expect that to go 
go to the communities, to the grassroots, to make sure that they are, they are speaking about peace in the communities. Maybe in the quarter, maybe in the, in the association of women association, in the traditional uh, 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 building, and uh, maybe in the road. However, after their training, the human rights group is asserting it will go a long way to seek a lasting solution to the ongoing crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Conflit foncier, l'espace vert du bloc 23 du quartier Bonamoussadi, situé dans le 5e arrondissement de la ville de Douala, a été détruit. Dans la nuit du 17 au 18 février dernier, un individu prétend être le propriétaire du site quand l'affaire est pourtant pendante devant les juridictions. Plus de détails avec Inès Pangan. Le réveil est brutal pour les habitants du bloc 23 à Bonamoussadi ce 17 février 2022. Des individus, armes en main, détruisent l'espace vert du quartier et construisent à la place une clôture en matériaux provisoires. À une heure du matin, le téléphone a sonné. Avant de prendre, il s'est éteint. Mais après, on a quand même un signal d'alerte pour les bandits. C'est le sifflet. J'ai entendu le sifflet dans tout le quartier. Pip, 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 pip. Je, suis, je suis sorti. Moi aussi, je suis sorti. Avant d'arriver à la place, j'ai trouvé que toute la grande population était là. Et dès qu'on m'a vu à dit voilà, c'est l'homme qu'on attend. Monsieur, approchez-vous. Il y avait au moins 300 personnes. La preuve est qu'ils sont arrivés avec les tôles, les lattes, ils, ils coupent les arbres, ils, ils mettent les, 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 les chevrons, les tôles, ils clouent et tout. Personne ne pouvait s'approcher. Ils étaient avec les banquettes, les boutons. Et même, et même, je vais même, pour ne pas dire que je vais aller loin, j'ai remarqué qu'il y avait même l'arme. Et il y a les enfants qui voulaient arrêter. J'ai dit non, 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 non. Je laisse même arrêter, je dis laissez, n'allez pas mourir les enfants, laissez. Le site de 1050 mètres est au centre d'une dispute. Les résidents de la zone affirment qu'au moment de la construction de ce quartier du 5e arrondissement de Douala, la mission d'aménagement et d'équipement des terrains urbains en abrégé Maïtu avait laissé inoccupée cette terre, comme le montre cette plaque. En ce moment, nous sommes au tribunal avec un inconnu qu'on n'a jamais vu à cause de notre placette, pour nos événements heureux et malheureux. Comme la maïture nous a octroyé il y a de cela 38 ans. Et nous avons effectivement des documents. Même la mairie de Douala 5e, quand ils veulent faire quelque chose, ils s'approchent, ils disent « Allez voir la placette publique du bloc 23 ». L'affaire encore pendante en justice, les auteurs des casques de la place publique du bloc 23 à Bounamoussadi Douala sont arrêtés par les éléments de sécurité publique. Et la suite de ce journal, c'est avec vous, la donnée en ça. On va à l'international prendre VOI. Yes, and now we talk news out of the country where diplomacy is at a fever pitch with the NATO alliances, allies and President Vladimir Putin with the White House offering the Russian leader two choices, an invasion of Ukraine with devastating consequences or a negotiated peace with what Putin sees as humiliating concessions. More with the Voice of America. The White House insists there is only one way out of the mounting crisis as Russia continues to amass troops and hold drills along the Ukrainian border. Diplomacy. But after a frenzied weekend of high-level talks between President Joe Biden and the leaders of Russia and Ukraine, an unsettling fact remains. No one knows what President Vladimir Putin's next move will be. As we have said before, we're in the window um, when an invasion could begin at any time. We will not comment on any details of our intelligence information, except, that, except to say that it could begin this week. The U.S. is ready uh, for any uh, situation. Ukraine's leader on Monday said all signs point to an invasion. We are told that February 16 will be the day of the invasion. We'll make it a day of national unity. The relevant decree has been signed. We will put out national flags, put on yellow-blue ribbons, and will show our unity to the entire world. 
Washington has sent hundreds of millions in military aid to Ukraine, and on Monday ordered the temporary relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv. Will Pomerantz, acting director of the Wilson Center's Kennan Institute, told VOA that Putin is unlikely to back down. Putin has demanded that Ukraine be barred from its goal of joining the NATO alliance. The U.S. has dismissed that demand, citing NATO's open-door policy. I don't see Putin really having an option to retreat uh, because he has put so much at stake during this crisis. Uh, and to retreat and kind of say, never mind, that's not Vladimir Putin's uh, strategies. On Monday, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visited Kyiv ahead of a Tuesday trip to Moscow and demanded clear steps to de-escalate the current tensions. We are prepared to have a serious dialogue with Russia about questions of European security. NATO and the USA made proposals to Russia that we support. We now expect a reaction and answer from Russia. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov told Putin that Russia should stay in talks. The readiness for listening to counter-arguments, our possibilities aren't exhausted. Of course, they shouldn't continue endlessly, but at this stage, I would propose to continue and increase them. Biden says NATO allies are in lockstep and that Russia will face harsh sanctions if it invades. It is clear there is no love lost between the formerly United Soviet states. Russia annexed part of Ukraine in 2014 and controls it still. But in the testy, frigid Ukrainian capital, residents this Valentine's Day are trying to banish fear with the one force stronger than war. Club. Anita Powell, VOA News, Washington. Sport football, c'est le contre-pied parfait. Alors que plusieurs acteurs du milieu sportif espèrent la réhabilitation de la Ligue professionnelle de football, le président de la Fédération camerounaise de football, Samuel Etofis, vient de nommer le général Pierre Semengue à la tête du Conseil transitoire du football professionnel, du moins si on s'en tient un document signé de Samuel Etofis et largement relayé ce 17 février 2022 sur les réseaux sociaux. Déjà la veille, il a annoncé un accord avec le général Pierre Semingue. C'était au cours de la session du comité exécutif de la FECA Foot tenue à Limbé, dans la région du Sud-Ouest. Une session au cours de laquelle, souvenez-vous, je vous le disais hier déjà, le journaliste Guy Bay Gatama a été suspendu pour une durée de trois mois. On fait le point avec Makedali Dinochon. Une passe manquée ne fait pas de votre coéquipier un adversaire sur le terrain. Lors de la session ordinaire du comité exécutif de la Fédération Camerounaise de football tenue le 16 février dans le sud-ouest, le président Samuel Etofis fait une annonce forte. À ce jour, nous avons pu obtenir un accord avec le président général Semengi, quelque chose qui me tenait particulièrement à cœur. Et dont le détail reste à parfaire. Ces détails sont bien évidemment liés au football professionnel, actuellement en perte de vitesse au Cameroun. Alors que plusieurs acteurs espéraient une réhabilitation de la Ligue de football professionnel du Cameroun suivant la sentence du tribunal arbitral du sport, le président de la FECA Foot prend le contre-pied de ceci et nomme le général Pierre Semengue président du comité transitoire du football professionnel. André Noël Essien est vice-président du dit comité. Marthe Moira et autres Jean-Paul Akono font partie des cinq membres. Le comité transitoire du football professionnel est chargé de la restructuration et de la gestion du football professionnel. Il est placé sous la supervision du président de la FECA Foot. En clair, la fédération camerounaise de football veut reprendre l'organisation du football professionnel, gérée depuis une dizaine d'années par la Ligue de football professionnel du Cameroun LFPC. Pour le président de la FECA Foot, rassembler la famille du football en proie à une crise de plus de nombreuses années fait partie des priorités de son mandat. En sollicitant du comité exécutif un mandat de négociation et de conciliation autour des litiges qui ont fait dépenser à notre fédération plus de 900 millions de nos francs lors du mandat précédent, j'étais animé par deux ou trois objectifs faire des économies, privilégier le dialogue et rassembler la famille du football, les premiers résultats sont satisfaisants. La confirmation de Benjamin Banlock au poste de secrétaire général de la FECA Foot 
L'adoption après modification des règlements des championnats professionnels Elite One et Elite Two pour la saison 2021-2022 et autre suspension de Gibay Gatama, membre du comité exécutif de la FECA Foot pour une période de trois mois, font partie des différentes résolutions adoptées par le comité exécutif de la FECA Foot à Limbe. Et on continue de parler sport avec vous, la donnée est en dessin. Yes, and this time around, we talk about the president of the Cameroon Football Federation, Samuel Tufis, that has been traditionally recognized as a peacemaker by paramount rulers in the southwest region. Dressed in the Bakweri traditional regalia by Chief David Esoka Endili, the president was addressed as Muna Eyole in the company of other traditional notables, amongst which is the paramount ruler of the Bafos, His Royal Majesty von Ekoko Mukete the Foot. Let's listen to him talk on the importance and need for such recognition. Obviously, when the idea came up, we bought into it and said we'll dress him up and uh, show him that we are very appreciative for what he has done. We are proud of him and we want to encourage him. And of course, peace we need, of course, in the southwest and north you know what's going on. And we felt that what he Ito, does have is uh, something um, which um, can actually kick off peace even in our region. And uh, he is a brother, he's one of us, and we felt that we should recognize him and give him, him the title as, uh, as, as a peacemaker. And we truly believe that even when there's division, football unites people, and even when there's division, we feel that it touches a heart across Cameroon and it touches a heart across not just the sour people, the South West region, but even the North West and all of that. And he's that perfect Cameroonian we're trying to show to the youth that with hard work, perseverance, you can be the very best. And he exemplifies that very best. And we came here to honor that and dress him in that traditional outfit to say, keep going forward and know who you are. We are behind you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now that report uh, puts an end to the 8 p.m. Balingua News because here with Spectrum Television. But do make sure to take a rendezvous tomorrow 8 p.m. with another set. Have a wonderful night in the company of our programs. Good night to you, Lila Rengarze. Bonsoir à vous, la donnette au dessin. Mesdames et messieurs, merci de nous avoir suivis. On se retrouve très vite sur les antennes de Spectrum Television. Si, bien sûr, Dieu veut. Bonsoir. <coughs>